Hi hey everybody, this is my first YouTube video. It's a dual purpose video. It's going to be an introduction to me along with a contest entry video to East Coast Preppers SHTF skill set. Uh, first off, I'm a paramedic. I have about 13 years of experience in the pre-hospital setting. and. Uh, I work for a strictly 911 service in my area. Actually, two 911 services. I work part time for another one. I'm also an instructor in my field, and I feel that the information that I've learned and the skills that I've honed over the years can be useful to the prepper community. If you disagree or if you don't like what I have to say, don't watch. this particular video I'm going to talk about blood pressures. Uh, what is a blood pressure and the different ways to take it and how to assess a blood pressure with little to no equipment on hand. The uh, automatic blood pressure monitors, the kind you get down at Wally World for $9.99, those are terribly inaccurate for the most part. I don't trust them and then unless I put my ears on it specifically I don't trust the blood pressure you can tell a lot about what's going on with your patient through blood pressures and I think it's an important skill to have when hospitals and doctors and ambulances and everything else aren't going to be readily available so without further ado I'll get to the explanation as to what a blood pressure is. So what is a blood pressure? A blood pressure is a measurement of the pressure exerted on the walls of the arteries when both the heart contracts and when the heart is at rest. A blood pressure reading is determined or illustrated with two numbers a larger number over a smaller number. The larger number, which is called the systolic blood pressure, is a measurement of the pressure in your arteries when the heart contracts. So when your heart beats and it sends blood throughout the body, that's what the top number represents, how much pressure is on your arteries. When the heart is at rest, that's what the bottom number represents called the diastolic blood pressure or your diastolic pressure. Um, it is a representation of the amount of pressure against the arteries when your heart is not beating, when your heart is at rest, so between contractions. Now, the equipment you need to take a blood pressure appropriately is a blood pressure cuff, also called a spigmometer, and a stethoscope. A normal adult blood pressure is 120 over 80. <clears throat> now that doesn't mean every single adult normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. That's the textbook version of it. Um, 120 over 80 is what's considered ideal, but what is ideal for one person may not be ideal for another. If a patient has a history of high blood pressure or conversely if the patient has a history of low blood pressure you're going to see probably a drastic difference in what is normal for them but for our purposes 120 over 80 is considered a normal blood pressure um, nowadays it seems to me that people and the medical community both have become way too dependent on these automatic blood pressure cuffs that you can go down to Walmart and get for $9.99. Now, I have seen them take accurate blood pressures and I guess in a pinch for the most part they will at least get you in the ballpark, but in my experience they are terribly inaccurate and I just don't trust them. So unless I'm taking it myself with a good blood pressure cuff and a good set of ears, I don't trust it. To take a blood pressure cuff appropriately, I'm sorry, to take
take a blood pressure appropriately, you place the cuff on the patient's upper arm, which I will demonstrate a little later, and you place the bell of your stethoscope in the bend of the arm, right in this area. You pump up the blood pressure cuff until you see the needle and the, the textbook will tell you, you pump up the blood pressure cuff until you cannot hear a pulse through your stethoscope anymore. Now when you let the pressure off and the needle starts coming down, the first time you hear a pulse, that will be your top number, your systolic blood pressure. You continue to let off the pressure until you do not hear a pulse anymore. The last n time you heard a pulse, a little bump through your stethoscope, that will be your bottom number, your diastolic blood pressure, which gives you your 120 over 80. Now, a blood pressure cuff, such as this one, is measured in increments of two. The, uh, the thick black lines are in increments of 10, and the little black lines are in increments of two. So if you're using a blood pressure cuff you should never get an odd number. You should never get 121 over 81. There is no odd numbers on there. And I just had to say that because that's a pet peeve of mine when a student comes through and takes a blood pressure and gives me an odd number. I'm always curious as to how he got it because there's no odd numbers on there. But anyway, um, if you only have half of your equipment, say you don't have your set of ears. All you have is your blood pressure cuff. You can still assess a blood pressure for the most part. You can get the top number at least. You'll be able to get the systolic pressure. Which, no, you shouldn't base any of your treatments or, or make a diagnosis based purely on that, but at least you will know where, you're, where you stand in the ballpark. The, w the way you assess a what's called a palpated blood pressure, you put the blood pressure cuff on the upper arm just like you normally would, but instead of using a stethoscope, you find your radial pulse, which your radial pulse is the one located right at your wrist. When you put the blood pressure cuff on, find that pulse. When you find it, begin to inflate the cuff. Inflate it until you do not feel that radial pulse anymore. As you release the pressure in the cuff, you will eventually feel another radial pulse. You'll begin to feel that pulse again. As soon as you feel that pulse, the number that you saw when you felt the pulse is going to be your systolic blood pressure. So you would document that. They have a 120 over P or a 120 palpated blood pressure. You cannot get the bottom number because you're going to feel that pulse from the first time you feel it, you'll feel it for the rest, the, the duration of the deflation of the cuff. cuff. <coughs> so you cannot get a diastolic blood pressure when you're palpating a blood pressure. But at least you have half of it. At least it'll get you in the ballpark. Now let's say you don't have any equipment. All you have are your hands. Now you can somewhat assess a blood pressure by just assessing a pulse. And it has nothing to do with the rate of a pulse. It has to do with the location of a pulse. Now if you're out in the field and you have no equipment and you reach down and you can feel a radial pulse which again that's this one right here on your wrist if you can feel that pulse then that patient has at least an 80 systolic blood pressure the top number is going to at least be 80 if you can't feel a radial pulse but you can feel a femoral pulse now the femoral pulse is taken in the femoral artery in the groin area on the inside of the thigh where the leg meets the hip basically. 
if you can fill that one, but you can't fill that one, then your systolic number, the top number, is going to be around 70. That means that patient has a low blood pressure. Now if you can't fill either one of these, if you can't fill one and you can't fill two, but you can fill a carotid pulse in the neck, then that patient has around a 60 systolic blood pressure. Now again, this is not something that's etched in stone and it's not something to determine your treatment or your diagnosis based on, but at least it will get you an idea of how your patient is doing. If you have no other pulses except for a carotid pulse, then your patient circle in the drain and something needs to be done pretty quick. Um, you know, there's there's several different things that could be the cause of it. You know, if it's a traumatic injury or something, they may have internal bleeding or external bleeding that you can obviously see. But um, either way, you know that that patient is no longer compensating and they're fixing to the crash on you. So, the three main points uh, are your uh, radial, femoral, and carotid. Those three pulse points can get you an idea of what a blood pressure is if you have no other equipment on you to assess a blood pressure. So, to palpate a blood pressure, like I said, you find the radial artery locate that pulse. Once you locate it, you start inflating the cuff. Inflate it until you don't feel a pulse anymore and then slowly release the pressure. about a 118 palpated blood pressure. I hope this helps. Good luck to everybody else in the contest.